Following up from the previous video, I'm going to look into compound interest, but this is a more simplified uh, compound interest uh, video. If you want the more complicated compound interest, those where the interest is compounded um, monthly or half yearly or so, there's another video dedicated on that. Um, for this one, we're going to stick to the simple compound interest. Now, what's different from compound interest, if you've watched the previous video on simple interest, um, for compound interest, we don't have a specific formula for the interest itself. You can only calculate the interest at, at the end once you have the future value. So if you remember for simple interest or if you look back on the video, we had this specific interest formula which gets students confused thinking that it's the final simple interest formula but remember the final simple interest is when you the final value for simple interest is when you add the interest to your value for compound interest we automatically just have the total value um, formula so again we're going to specify some keywords so compound interest in total so this is the total amount this is for the total amount, which we call um, which we call future value, is the present value, which I'm going to use the same notation as before, and this time it's going to be 1 plus the rate over 100 to the power of n. This is compounded, meaning that if this is my present value, my interest is going to be, um, it's going to start small and then my interest is going to increase. It's going to add up and stack up and it's going to increase ever so quickly. Um, so this is the idea of compound interest and it's going to increase because of this power behavior here. So just to recap on notation, future value, is, this is the future value. P is the present value. So this is what you start with and the future value is what you end with. The R is the rate. And notice how the previous uh, formula had R without the divide by 100. But remember that you will eventually have to divide by 100, whatever notation or formula you're going to use. And then your N is going to be the years. Now, it looks complicated. And you can skip this part if you want to. But the idea is that this part is a multiplier. So if I'm, if I'm increasing an amount, if I'm increasing an amount by 5%, I'm multiplying it by 1.05. If I'm increasing an amount by 10%, I'm increasing, I'm multiplying it by 1.10. If I'm increasing by 50%, then I'm increasing by the 1.50. These are called multipliers, and these refer to, let me highlight this. So these come from this part, while the um, this comes from the 1 plus. So mathematically, that's how it works. So it's not too complicated, but it's a quicker method of calculating an interest over time. So if I would go through it slightly differently. Um, so this will give you the interest that you're going to add on. This is like calculating the percentage of an amount and then adding it to the amount itself. So it's a quicker way of calculating multipliers if you're unsure. Uh, try researching what multipliers are, they're quite useful. And then because it's, it's compounding yearly, so the value is gonna keep on increasing, you're not gonna just add on the same value as you do in simple interest. So notice how I carefully drew the same squares because we're just gonna multiply by, if I'm doing three years, then I'm gonna multiply by three, it's the same amount. For compound interest is different. It's gonna, the amount is gonna change every year because this is your present value. You're gonna add a bit of interest on it. And then your new interest is gonna be based on your new amount. So it's gonna be, your interest is gonna grow a bit. So your new interest is gonna look something like just slightly bigger because your previous value is bigger. And then your next year, you're going to take the percentage of the previous amount. So you're going to have 
what you had there and then the previous one and then because you're the percentage you calculate is based on a bigger amount you're going to even have a bigger interest on top so it's going to keep on increasing um, now this is all too complicated if you feel like it but it's good to understand what is happening in the formula um, and it's just a matter of substituting substituting values in now and different values will be missing sometimes they'll ask for the future value sometimes they'll ask for the present value sometimes for the rates and sometimes for the uh, number of years and it's just a matter of using algebra to be able to solve any of these i'm going to go through two um IGCSE examples and i'm going to be covering two um types of questions they might ask so this is one of the simple questions so it just asks you to calculate the compound interest so Marlene invests 550 at a rate of 1.9 per year compound interest calculate the amount Marlene has after 10 years so keyword is compound interest so we have to use the compound interest formula and we need to write everything on the side so we have the present value as 550 the rate is 1.9 and we have the years as 10. And that's it, that's all the information we need. So we need the amount after 10 years, it means we need the total. So again, always be aware of what they need. Do they need the total or do they need the interest? That's very important. So the future value will be the present value, open bracket, one plus the rate over 100 times 10. So obviously you can do all of this at once, but let's do it part by part. So the one plus 1.9 will give you 1.019 to the power of 10. So this will help me calculate how much I'm gonna keep on stacking up and this value is gonna change every year. So that's the power of 10 there. So multiplying everything together, we're gonna get 663.9 zero um now if they ask so this is a different question if they asked for the find, if they said find the interest um in this case you're gonna have to do the extra step of saying well if the interest is just going to be the difference so if this is my present value and this is how much was added on top so this whole thing is your future value. So obviously the interest is going to be the future value minus the present value. Um, so we have the future value minus the present value. And that's going to be 103.90. So that's how much interest was added up. Now they will rarely ask you how much was done per year. It's not really a question they do ask but it's, sometimes they might ask for the interest, so just be aware of which one to do. So this is where, again, it's different. We don't have a specific formula for calculating interest, like simple interest. For compound interest, this is the only formula you get to use. For simple interest, remember that you can calculate the interest itself, but you have to add it on top of your present value. Um, another word they might use, actually, for compound interest is that it's um, exponentially increases or something similar um, exponentially because this is the power raising something to the power would be um, where the power actually changes is when it's expo it's exponentially in expen uh, sorry exponentially increases um, this behavior of it growing very quickly is called an exponential growth uh, which is why sometimes they might use this wording instead of compound interest so just be aware of that difference now the other part of this question this was from a paper four question so it had a couple of parts um, so Hans invests 550 at a rate of x per year compound interest at the end of 10 years he has a total amount of such correct in the ascent find the value of x so we need the rate um, again write down all your values so we have the future value is this the present value is 550 the rate is unknown the years is 10 
So just putting everything in, that's just a matter of using algebra to solve these. And if you want more detailed, um, more details about how to find all the values, you could watch the other video on compound interest as well. So this will be as such to the power of 10. Um, and then you just need to solve for x. It's just, you need to know the steps. So to find x, you have to get rid of the 550, then you get rid of the power, then you get rid of the one, then the 100. So make sure you get rid of everything around x, then deal with powers here, then with the one, and then with the 100. The reason we're doing with the 10 and then the one is because 10 is encapsulating all of these so we have to get rid of it first so uh, we divide by 500 550 sorry on both sides so we get 1.1605 and that's to four decimal places okay and then we take the tenth root and you need to know the button on your calculator to find the tenth root if you're unsure or you don't have a button where it does a button such as this, which allows you to put any root, you can use this fact that roots are actually a power of one over something. So if I want the root of two, I could write to the power of one over two. If I want the root of 10, I could write one over 10. So that's just a side fact. Um, so this will be equal to 1.0150, which is our value after taking the root. So now we get rid of the one, so we have this minus one, zero, one, five, zero, I don't need that last zero, but um, then we cross multiply or just multiply by 100 there and you're gonna get 1.5% and you can easily check your answer. Obviously it's in percent because we multiplied by 100 um, in the end. So you can check your answer by just substituting back into the formula itself and saying that you get the same future value. So you should get the same future value. Um, now, if the power was missing, um, then you'd, this is for more advanced, you'd have to use logs. Um, so this is not for the 580 curric IGCSE curriculum. So not something you'd have to worry about, um, but it's good to know how to find the present value um, if needed and how to find the rate. Uh, if you are missing, just to do it really quickly, if you are missing the present value, let's move this to the Okay, let's say, let's say we knew all of this information and we were missing the present value instead. So present value was missing, but we knew that the future value was 638.30.30. Uh, our rate was, we just found it at 1.5 and the years was 10. So let's say this was the case. So we just write in the formula as we usually do, power of 10. And what you're going to do is just simply just simplify this expression. And you should get you will get a 1.1605, that's the to four decimal places. So if I want to find P, I'll just divide by this value. So divided by 1.1605, and that should give you the present value. Um, okay, so this almost gives me 550.002, which is obviously 550 um, to the nearest cent. So 
this is another way of finding the other missing values. Hopefully the videos were clear and the distinction between simple interest and compound interest is made clear as well. Just be aware of the formulas that you need to use for each one and what they ask in each one.